All right, cool cats, make sure you're on the page that says multiplication with arrays or area models at the top. Now, the first thing you might be thinking is, um, what's an array? Phenomenal question. An array is basically an area model that uses what we know about area to find multiplication products. Circle array, and when I say it, sometimes I say it real fancy, like I'm in a fancy restaurant or something. So here's our lesson on arrays. Here's our review quickly. Find the area, underline that, of the rectangle below. Think to yourself, how do I find the area of a rectangle? Just think to yourself. If you're thinking, Mr. Phelps, too easy. Area is length times width when you're finding a rectangle. You're on the right track. Good work. Put a box around the length, which is 80, and a box around the width, which is 20. We need to multiply these two values. So 80 times 20 would be our area. And to multiply these, I can look at the 8 and the 2. 8 times 2 is 16. And I have a 0 and another 0 just right there. Put your comma. 1,600 is the area of this rectangle. Now let's use that knowledge to solve this first example. Here we go. Example 1. Find the product of 82 and 23 using an array. Circle product. Product means multiplication, so put a times uh, sign right above product. And then 82 and 23 are our two values, or factors. So when we use an array model, we split each number into its place value, kind of like expanded form. So it's going to look like this. 82, circle that, can be split into 80 in the tens place and 2 in the ones place. So at the top of our array, put the 80 here and put the 2 here. 82. Now our other number is 23. Circle 23, and that can be split into 20 in the tens place and 3 in the ones place. So on the left side of your array, put 20 and then put 3 underneath. The beautiful thing about arrays is that it makes all of these interesting rectangles with different lengths and widths and we just find the area of them all. So this first rectangle, I'm just going to highlight this. Don't do this on your paper. This is just so you know what I'm talking about. Just this rectangle here in the top left corner. The dimensions of that rectangle have a length of 80 and a width of 20. So to find the area, we need to multiply 80 times 20. So let's write that on our uh, paper. I want you to actually write the two factors every time. So let's go to back to my black pen. Here we go. 80 times 20. That little dot is the same as the times, the multiplication sign, equals 16 with two zeros, 1,600. Let's go to the right one box. So now I'm looking at... This, oops, that should be a highlighter. It's embarrassing. <laughs> highlighter, make it yellow. Come on, work for me. Oh, no. Okay, act like this is working, children. Be cool, be cool, be cool. Everyone be cool. Ha-ha! All right, top right corner. There we go. I'm looking at this one now, and the dimensions are 2 and 20. So write out 2 times 20, which would give us... 40 as the area of that box. So put 40 in that box. There we go. Moving down to the last row, let's try this one. 80 times 3. Well, 8 times 3 is 240. Oh, sorry, 8 times 3 is 24, plus the 0 would be 240. And the very last one in the bottom right-hand corner, that is just 2 times 3, which gives us 6. And if you're confused about where we got the 2 and the 3, I got you. Check it out. This top dimension of this rectangle lines up with the 2. And this dimension lines up with the 3. So I knew 
the dimensions had to be 2 and 3 based on the rectangle. So that's the fun part of the array, but we're not done yet. We want to find the actual product of 82 times 23. To do that, we need to add up all of our partial products here. So take your pencil again, and in your scratch work area, add up all of these numbers really carefully. 1,600 plus, let's do the next biggest, which is 240. And the next largest value is 40. And then the final smallest is 6. Put the plus sign. Here we go. Notice how organized I keep my work so I can add these up quickly at the end. 6 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 is just 6. 4 plus 4 plus 0 is 8. My hundreds place, that gives me 8. Oh, I forgot my comma, that's embarrassing. And the 1 comes straight down. Now I have 1,886. And I circle it because I know it's my final answer. And you can draw an arrow here so I know that's your final answer when I check your work. Example two, find the product of 345 and 72. Oh my goodness, we got a triple digit number. It works the exact same way. Everyone, don't freak out, it's okay. 345, break that into 340 and five. And the left side, 72 becomes 70 and two. It's the same process, just with one more column. I did forget to circle product there and put time so I know my operation. Let's go to work. I'm going to use a green pen so it's fun. 300 times 70 is in our first box. 300 times 70 equals 3 times 7 is 21 with 1, 2, 3 zeros, 21,000 in our first box. Keep on moving. 40 and 70. 40 times 70 equals the 4 and the 7 multiply give us that 2, 8 plus the double zero, 2,800. We're chugging along nicely now. Top right box. Think to yourself, what are the dimensions of this box going to be? If you said, Mr. Phelps, the dimensions of those box are 5 and 70, you are correct. 5 times 70 equals 5 times 7 is 35, plus that extra 0 is 350. Not sure why it wasn't green. Whatever. Bottom left corner. Now I have 300 times 2, 3 times 2 is 6, plus your two zeros gives you 600. Moving on. 40 times 2, 4 times 2 is 8, plus the additional 0 is 80. In the bottom right box, it's always probably going to be your smallest value. 5 times 2, we all know that is 10. I'll give you a few seconds to take the rest of these notes before we add all of these puppies up. Okay, so I found all of my partial products. That's these numbers here. Those are all of my partial products. And now I need to add them up so I get the final product of our two numbers. Watch how organized I write these numbers. 21,000. And the next largest is 2,800. Be really careful with these zeros. And then the next largest is 600. And then I have 350, 80, and 10. Put a plus sign, put a line. Now you can add these up in any order. I just like going from the uh, largest to smallest so that it stays really organized. I got an email. We're good now. OK, so one's place. Add all those zeros up. Oh, we get zero. Ten's place. Five plus eight is 13 plus one is 14. Put a 4, and like we practiced yesterday, regroup the 1 into the hundreds. So now I have 1 plus 8, that's 9, plus 6, that's 15, plus 3 is 18. Put an 8, carry the 1 into the thousands place. Now I have 1 plus 1, that's 2, plus another 2 is 4, and 2 comes straight down, 24,840. Put a bubbly thing around it because it's your final answer. Whoop. Bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. Ten seconds to make sure you've got all of those addition down. And now I'm going to turn it over to the real Mr. Phelps to continue example three. Nice work, kids.